Welcome. My name is Dirk Hildebrandt, and today I would like to talk about AV1 and film grain synthesis. Uh, first time in history, it's possible to carry the grain independently from the video in the video stream towards the decoder, and the grain is uh, rendered on top of the decoded uh, video so that you really get the grain flavor of the original footage at your consumer device. Film grain synthesis in AV1 is mandatory and also possible for uh, you be used in combination with uh, other video encoder technologies from the past legacy encoders. So this is really the future of video encoding. It's the right way for uh, in the perspective of uh, uh, saving bit rates, uh, enhancing video quality and uh, carrying the film look. Now we start. For AV1 and film grain synthesis, I like to distinguish between two different use cases. On one hand, broadcast and TV sets, and on the other hand, OTT and second screen devices. For TV sets, we often have wrong uh, default values at the TV sets. For example, a too high contrast, wrong colors, too high sharpness, uh, and an activated video denoising. So uh, um, here in this episode of the HDTV test, it uh, will be explained how to deactivate the settings. Um, additionally, we have the filmmaker mode, which is grouping the settings and deactivating the settings. It's um, somewhere on your remote control, a button or somewhere uh, um, a function in your um, in the menu of your TV set. So uh, which is also deactivating some of these parameters. Additionally, um, the um, frame interpolation uh, will be de deactivated. So you have don't have um, uh, motion smoothing and um, this is really um, a good possibility uh, to do it in, in a more automatic way. To use video denoising at the TV set um, is the wrong approach. So um, there are different uh, reasons for this. One is that it's the wrong place in the workflow. So at the end, you already has compressed material and the encoding process also already did something with your grain, with your noise, and it's more artifacts which will be provided to the TV set, but smoothing away this artifacts plus the, the, the rest of the, the, the grain and noise structure leads to waxy skins here. Um, we can see this on the, on the right side of the screen. On the left side, um, we see that the skin still has this, um, this uh, structure and this is a, a source, uh, is a DVD. And um, so the, um, the, when we start the DVD, um, then uh, with the, the, the denoising is activated and leads to this waxy skin and faces. And um, uh, the denoising technology is not made for real time high, high quality uh, results. So um, in the next slide, we will see where it's um, um, much better to do and apply the noise management. And this is all about it. We are talking about video denoising and degraining for film grain synthesis and how to do it in the right way. For OTT, the situation for everyone in film grain synthesis is much better. So um, we don't have this um, massive um, parameters of the TV set, which is harming the, the video signal. So um, uh, we also have somehow glitches. Um, uh, for example, um, we have uh, a, ch a gain shift here at Apple devices, which leads to uh, darker parts of your image. But uh, for example, we don't have any uh, video denoising. Um, additionally, um, 
uh, OTT is losing using a lot of um, second screen devices. So the distance between the screen and your eyes is lower. Instead of meters, we are measuring centimeters. And the nearer you're to the screen, the more resolution the eye is possible to recognize. So you have um, two uh, gr big uh, differences here um, in comparison to the broadcast case where you're sitting in your living room uh, meters away um, uh, in front of your big uh, TV set. Um, at least you're able to enjoy more video resolution and less uh, faulty and de uh, faulty uh, parameters um, uh, based on the default settings of your TV set. And um, today I have to say uh, the quality, the highest quality you can get is um, via OTT. It's not anymore broadcast. Um, additionally for broadcast, you have the real-time uh, encoding process, which also already uh, also uh, has um, um, uh, a lower um, quality in the encoding efficiency. So OTT is leading in picture quality today. BIM Brain Synthesis gives you the big advantage to um, have this uh, high fidelity film look experience uh, at your uh, at your second screen devices. And um, but there are a couple of other advantages, and one of the most important is uh, the optimization of the video bit rates. Uh, here in this picture uh, uh, side by side, I have uh, on the left side the original one with noise in there. Uh, we have um, uh, encoded with H.264 and on, on top we uh, blitted the motion vectors, so these white uh, lines. And you see the, the hand is falling, but for the darker areas um, uh, the, the encoder technology was not able to recognize the right um, uh, uh, motion because the, the high amplitudes of noise uh, are giving uh, faulty motion vectors. And on the right side, we applied our video denoising named Iris from the company Wavelet Beam. And then we encoded with H.264 and uh, we blitted the motion vectors. And you see that the 40, 40 motion vectors has begun. Uh, only the motion uh, from the falling hand is uh, recognized properly. And um, this leads not only to less motion vectors, uh, 40 motion vectors, but also to a higher uh, quality of the, the rest of the motion vectors and um, at least to really um, a, a lower bit rates. Netflix mentioned um, a reduction of bit rates uh, um, of about 30%. Um, this is also what we at Wavelet Beam uh, has recognized for um, a lot of content we are processing day by day. and. Um, um, at least it's really the possibility to 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 distinguish between um, the video content and later on for film grain synthesis to uh, to enjoy the film look and uh, with uh, with uh, for video bitrate optimization uh, this is really the key. Here the AV1. Uh, uh, and film grain synthesis uh, block diagram. On one hand, in the upper left uh, corner, we have the uh, the denoising denoiser, uh, which is included uh, in uh, AV1, but it's the default one, which is coming with the encoding technology and uh, which has not such a high uh, quality. It's only a 2D. A Wiener filter uh, today, and um, uh, the quality is not good enough to uh, to uh, produce high fidelity uh, premium content. And additionally, um, then uh, the denoise material is compared with the original one. And so the difference between these is used um, to generate the um, the uh, the grain tables. We are the film grain estimation. So um, the, the the size of the grain is estimated, but also um, um, the if it's um, how if it has a, a color um, um, shift or something, and this is all uh, represented into this film um, grain estimation and um, in this grain table, 
which is um, included into the metadata of the video stream. We say SEI message uh, and <clears throat> after decoding at the setup box or um, uh, uh, at the uh, in the browser, uh, in the decoder of the browser, uh, the, the grain <clears throat> will, ge will be generated based on this um, grain tables. And uh, the grain tables can change from one frame to the other, from one shot to the other. So uh, every um, possibility which also which can uh, appear at the import can be reflected with uh, film grain synthesis. So um, wavelet beam exchange not only the uh, the video denoising with iris, uh, but we also um, uh, modified and exchange uh, film grain um, uh, generation. So, so the film, the grain table generation. Um, and today we have to say uh, this is a completely automatic way in our case and um, maybe the the the, the AV1 and film grain synthesis by default with a default denoiser and film grain table is good enough for uh, user generated content but definitely not for premium content. <laughs> Here at our website I would like to uh, point to some of our um, products uh, which are available via software as a service. Um, so we on one hand uh, we have IRIS, uh, the video denoising and degrading technology uh, and here for example um, um, in a um, uh, side by side comparison uh, only the blue channel on the left side uh, the, the original and on the right side the denoised. So the the really the the benefits of using iris is that we also can recover um, picture details which are in in the the lowest um, um, in the darker areas of a pic, of a, a video and also in the brightest areas. So you all get this benefit of a higher dynamic range, and you will find um, great um, uh, demos in our um, gallery. So here's the video gallery and you can um, jump in and enjoy a, a couple of this um, uh, uh, video feeds and enjoying the, uh, uh, the, the quality directly via our website. Um, we have also Iris RAW. This is a video um, um, denoising for raw data, uh, DNG to DNG workflows. We have Iris AI. So combining super resolution uh, um, K, uh, AI based upscaling and um, video denoising. We have Iris Analyst. This is a measurement technology for measuring the, the horizontal video resolution and the video noise levels in PSNR DB values. So um, you can see the video resolution over time. You can um, this get this, all this information in a totally automatic way. Um, and um, uh, we then um, we have the film grain synthesis. So film grain synthesis here directly it's starting and you see that really you get this highly um, high fidelity grain on top of the of of, um, of this video. So uh, this is um, um, full HD pixel count. So not really ten eighty. Uh, MP, but um, uh, it's 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 the same pixel count um, as a full HD uh, um, AV1 at 1.2 megabits per second. Additionally, this is high fidelity um, grain. There's another video here below. So also, when you have a look at the at the um, the structure and but also the the, the, the this uh, tint of, um, of this color tint, uh, you really um, can represent um, all the flavors you you have in the uh, original footage. So this was part one of um, AV1 and film grain synthesis. Um, in the future, I will come up with a second part and um, hope that you tune in again um, in the future. Thank you for listening.